So welcome. This is Ia, the holistic artist, bringing to you the beginning of the Sat Nam sessions. So, in short, what the word Sat Nam means, um, you know, as a lot of things you try to translate them into English, they don't have a direct translation. Uh, Sat Nam means the truth, so I am the truth, uh, is in general what Sat Nam means or what we're going to use it to mean as we go on this journey together. So this is one of the Unleash Your Own Guru journeys, and this is the Sat Nam sessions. So what the Sat Nam sessions are is a way for you to really find that genuine self, that true transparent self, that confident and vulnerability self, so that you can be your genuine self and be that transparent self. And being transparent a lot of times do um, mean being comfortable and being confident as well in your vulnerability. So, you know, a lot of people like to say, yeah, um, you know, I'm genuine, I'm transparent because those are some of the buzzwords or, or the, the buzzwords of the day, you know, make you sound awesome and spectacular, especially when you're doing this work. Everybody wants to claim to be genuine and transparent because that just goes with, um, you know, who people assume you are, right? It's also a lot of ego and talking about, oh, I'm so humble, oh, I'm so genuine. A lot of that is a lot of ego as well because people will look to you as some mighty person because you have all of these other, you know, you're so perfect in personality, oh, you never get upset, or you're never offended, oh, you forgive everybody and love, da 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 you know, and whatever. Anyway. Um, this is about learning how to unleash your own guru and it starts with knowing how to accept yourself purely and as perfectly as you are at every moment that you are. These are little 30 minute sessions so that you can focus long enough to digest some of it and then the more we get into the mental practice of it, we will also add into some physical elements as well in restorative yoga, helping you use that mind-body connection to lock in that growth mind state. Um, because knowing how your mind and body are connecting on the daily, especially as we process a lot of our thoughts with our bodies when we shouldn't, will help us um, better get control over um, physical problems that we cause by mental uh, processing with our bodies, like, uh, you know, upset stomachs and headaches, migraines and things of that sort, even sciatica from squeezing down on your butt muscles too much when you are stressed can pinch down and cause you sciatica. It's a trip. What we do to ourselves um, by uh, tightening up and constricting our muscles and what a good stretch can do, as well as keeping that mind-body connection together to help you recognize your stressors. So the first of all of this journey has to start with ourselves. Um, I will tell my story later uh, on called The Breakdown on how I got to unleash my own guru and got to sharing this practice with you. And let me tell you, y'all, I'm not about to reinvent the wheel. I'm just another messenger. And hopefully the way that I deliver it will resonate with you, put some things in order, say it in a way that you finally go, oh, get it. Now I understand how to put it in action. Or, you know, I just reached you at a time where you are open to listen to some ways to work some stuff out for you. 
Um, so go on this journey with me as it's a continual life practice type of thing. I never want to believe that I am on autopilot. Uh, so I always do want to stay aware of myself in present day and time always to make sure that I am always practicing what I'm going to be preaching. All right, so like I said, these are just 30 minute little situations um, so that you can take it piece by piece, focus on it, come back and get some more, and focus on it again. This is the Unleash Your Guru uh, uh, yoga, yoga, yoga off the mat situation sessions. And this is the side non sessions. So, I can't see the clock and see how much time is left. Uh, set it for 20 minutes, so we'll see. All right, so first, we have to get the mental practice together, then the breathing practice, and then we can move into the physical practice. Um, so when I was doing these before, what happened I thought that they were recording on Facebook and Facebook failed me and then Instagram I didn't know that you can only save it like right after the video was over and if you missed that opportunity then you missed the opportunity for good I'm the worst at this technology stuff um, but I have had to learn since that's where everything has moved while we're in this COVID situation and man, let me tell you, it is trying all my patience. That's how I know I'm good to go and I have unleashed my guru for healing, at least for a minute. Because um, it has been tried and tested on every petty level, let me tell you. <sighs> anyway, so it's really difficult to know who we are unless you know to challenge that thinking and you know you probably don't genuinely know to challenge that thinking unless somebody brings it to your direct awareness we are and i you know it's not like i said i'm not coming up with anything extraordinary um, but we are not we do not know who we are from the time we are born. Like, unless you really challenge yourself to think about it, you don't know who you are because some, from the time you get here, you're being told who you are or who somebody thinks they see that you're gonna be. Or, ooh, you act like a this, so you're most gonna be a that. And they start raising you or teaching you or treating you in such a fashion. And so you really don't know who you are until it's challenged and you are empowered enough to even challenge the thought of challenging who you thought you are, who you thought you were, or who you think you are. Because you've always been told from the time that you get here who you think you are or who somebody else thinks that you are. And so Maybe life isn't going good for you. Maybe relationships aren't going good for you. Maybe you're not happy in, you know, the career that you've been thought to be told that you're going to be good at. Maybe it's the family career handed down to you and you're just not happy there because it's not genuinely who you are. But this is what you've been told and so this is what you've identified with and so this is what you thought you were going to be and you cannot seem to be content. You can't find any happiness there. Well, maybe guess what? Maybe that is not you. But this is who you've been told you are for so long. Now, unless somebody challenges you to think otherwise, why should you? Well, this is how your mind has to think in order to unleash your own guru. This is what Satnam Sessions is going to teach you to do, is really find all of these genuine parts of yourself. Be transparent, especially with yourself, because if you cannot be transparent, at least with yourself, like if you cannot be honest, the most honest, the most rawest, no matter how ugly it is, because of course that's the part you don't want to see, is the ugliness, but if you can't even be the most rawest and the most ugliest with yourself, how can you call yourself being transparent 
or genuine with the rest of the world? And how can you expect to get any of that back? So, as ugly as it may be, as ugly as you may are be about some things about yourself, you got one or two choices. You can accept them and leave it at that. Or you can accept them and then work on whatever it needs to be done to pretty them up, if it's possible. If there are things you can pretty them up, pretty them up. If it's too much effort, well, then you got to learn to accept it and learn that that's going to be the ugly side of you. And you can decide how you're going to display that to the rest of the world. But first and foremost, you got to be transparent and open with yourself about whatever that ugliness is. And then be genuine about how you're going to deal with it. And how you're going to make the rest of the world have to deal with your weakness. Alright? So, that's the first part of finding out who you genuinely are. Is learning about your weaknesses. And that was what we talked about on the first session. And, um, yeah. So, the the actual definition let's read that is a weakness state or condition of lacking strength we know that quality or feature regarded as a disadvantage or fault a quality or feature regarded as a disadvantage or fault a person or thing that one is unable to resist or likes excessively. A person or thing that one is unable to resist or likes excessively. So, these are what these are, these are what weaknesses can be. It can be a person, it can be a place or thing, it can be a quality or feature. So we want to be real about all of those things about us. What is a quality or feature about yourself that you may consider a weakness? Is it the example I used with my glasses? This is a weakness for me when I dance because I'm scared that I'm going to fling them off my face if I dance too hard and in the wrong way and then my glasses are going to go flying and then I'm not going to be able to see because they're the only pair I got. So in, in a way, they are a weakness for me when it comes to dancing. But is it something I can fix? Yeah, I can get better fitting glasses, one. Or I can get the little strap joint that holds them on my face. Or even better, I can get contacts. Boom, problem solved. And I got an up-to-date prescription. So, you know, that's a quality that could be considered, can be considered a weakness. In some professions, um, I believe they wouldn't let me be a fighter pilot at one point if I didn't have perfect vision, but I think I can run co corrective lenses now, I'm not sure. But let's just say that's the truth. So that's a feature or a quality. Um, being black. Let's keep it real. Being black is a feature that I have no control over that is considered a weakness a lot of times. Um, and you can see that now as the POC community is the one that suffers the most from um, this inequality and inequity in healthcare. Anyway, that's not what this is about. Um, so, uh, yeah, disadvantage or, or quality or feature. Um, my personality, a lot of things in my personality have caused me to, uh, has caused me to have some disadvantages and, um, that is not what we are going to talk about right now because that it goes on to the next thing, but you can think of things in your character that may be considered a weakness. To some and uh, or maybe there was a relationship that you had with someone and they were your weakness uh, maybe you can't resist going to the movies anything can be a, a weakness even um, maybe you just had your first grandchild 
and or maybe your first child period and you know even though that is such a sweet sweet distraction it could very well be keeping you from doing other things and so even good distractions you have to be aware of because even a good distraction can be a bad distraction when it is keeping you from doing something else that you should be doing or could be doing all right so think about what your weakness is be really really real about yourself even if it's something dietary you know you've been trying to get your weight together you know you shouldn't eat bread or you know you like chocolate or fried chicken or french fries i love french fries but that's not my problem i hate to work out um, but i like to go to the gym I'm not big on body weights, but the gym is closed right now, so, you know, um, I've really been trying to force this weight, uh, body weight exercise situation. Anyway, so be really real with yourself about all of your weaknesses, and then we will break down our weaknesses. So, um, I think that is about... Okay, yeah, so I was just checking to make sure that that's all I wanted to go into. I didn't want to know if I wanted to go into the next part, but nope. We just want to, again, think about your weaknesses. And I put weaknesses in a quote because as we talk about them, they may not really be a weakness, only what you have been thought to perceive as your weakness. Um... And it could really be your, your super strength. And you just need to know how to make it better work for you. Uh, but first, you have to be real with yourself about what is a weakness. What has held you back personality-wise. Uh, is it a, a real thing? Like, is it a person? Is it a relationship? Is it a certain type of situation that you avoid? Like, maybe you don't like um, mixing mingles. And you're the only person there and you have to go by yourself. Like maybe you hate that situation. But the kid in the lunchroom situation. I used to be real horrible and, and hate those types of things. But now, I don't care. <laughs> I go in there like I know everybody. And by the time I walk out the room, if that's my mission, guess what? I know everybody. And uh, I fake it sometimes. And some days I feel like that for real. Uh... So, know what your weakness is, because if you don't know what your weakness is, then you can't figure out what your strength is. And if you don't know what your weakness is, then you don't know what your weakness is, and you don't know where to get your strength from, which is undoing that weakness. But you have to be real with knowing what your weakness is, even if it might be your awesome personality, this very headstrong, very go get them leadership type of personality that might be considered a strength, but is it your weakness? It could be your weakness considering how you're using it and if it's not helping you get ahead and if it's making you seem not work withable, <laughs> you know, making you seem like you have too much ego. Uh, you know, making you don't appear to, to be someone that people want to work with. Well, that super awesome personality is no longer your strength. It has become a weakness. So, these are things that you have to think about. And see what is really your weakness and what is your strength. And then we will talk about those on the next one. So, how are you going to move this into a meditation of your body to help you use your body with these thought processes? Because one, your body responds to things and happens in repetition. It has muscle memory. This is why, if you take my classes, you'll hear me say this a thousand times, this is why you don't have to teach yourself how to walk. Every time you get out of bed in the morning, every time you go to sleep and you wake up and your body resets, 
You don't have to teach yourself how to walk because you have muscle memory, right? And so the same thing with stress. The way that you respond to stress the most, well, that's how your body is gonna respond. And the tricky thing is, your body will start responding to this stress long before you even realize that you might be stressed. It will go into this stressful response, you know, however long before you even know your response and then boom, you're set off and you have a headache from being from being um, under stress for so long you don't even realize it and this headache just boom, sets you right off or that the body only has three responses, fight, flight, or freeze. And it'll just, you know, whenever that's, whenever, whenever one of them kicks in, there it goes. So the next time, you know, if somebody says something to you, boom, off you go and you're ready to pop their heads off because your, your fight system kicked in because your stress response was already starting to rise up. And you never even caught it. You didn't even feel it because your mind and body had lost that connection. And so when you learn how to do this exercise, it helps you recognize when your body is starting to respond to stress long before you bring it into full fruition into your frontal lobe, into your active brain state. Or if you're already riled up, help you be able to when you say take a breath, really be able to take a breath and get something done and not just be breathing air in and out. Oh, I got to calm down. <sighs> but not really understanding the mechanics behind it and not really using that breath to calm yourself down. Even, even if it might be before you go on stage, before a performance, or go speak in front of people for whatever reason. Or, you know, hey, maybe it's for even shooting your own... Um, video for something. So we're just going to learn how to do this breathing thing real quick and, and learn how to keep our mind-body connection together. And as we continue on this journey, we'll go deeper and deeper into this practice. So stand to your feet. And I think if I stand back here, yep, you can see me. So this is just really simple. You're just gonna roll down to your feet and roll back up. If you cannot touch the ground, if you cannot touch your feet, that's perfectly okay. Um, if you have some yoga blocks, that's even better. If not, get you some. And um, until then, I'll show you what to do with your hands once you get down to the ground. So to roll down to the ground, you wanna start with your chin and not tuck it to your chest, but more so like pull it into your neck, into that, into that, that uh, joint right there where it connects at your collarbone and your neck. And just tuck it in there. Let the shoulders roll forward. Pull in on those lower abs. That's what's going to protect your lower back. Your knees can be micro bent. So let those shoulders roll forward, your back roll forward. And then as you reach the ground, then you can straighten those legs out and press that tailbone to the ceiling. Get that stretch in your hamstrings. Ha. Hold on, that's the timer. It won't stop, so let me grab that. Keep everything nice and relaxed. 
forward. All right, and if your arms, and if you can't find a, a good enough space to bend, either widen your legs, really focus on bending at your hip folds. You cannot bend in your waist, okay? Your waist is still in your back. That's not where you're meant to bend. You have to bend at your hip folds. So really focus on bending here in your hip folds and over. That should help give you a little more stretch in there. And then, like I said, if you don't have any yoga blocks, get you some yoga blocks. If you don't have a yoga block, get you a milk crate. Um, but, you know, try to, try to find you some yoga blocks or a couple big books to put up under your hands. Or help, this is my couch cushion. Bring your couch cushion out so that you can bring the floor up to your hands and just relax. And you want to hold that there for a while because what's going to happen is your body is going to want to come up out of it like, oh, all right, we've been here long enough. Come on, let's get on up. And nope, you got to force yourself back down through that and continue to relax. All right, so I'm not gonna do that right now, but you do that on your own. Um, so you're gonna roll up. This time you're gonna shift the weight back onto your heels. Roll yourself up, don't let your hands drag up. If your back is tight, you can put your hands on your hips. Fingertips forward, roll on up. Stacking yourself back on top of your hips. And stand on up. It's amazing how the hands on the hip thing really helps you come up. Remember, your fingertips are forward, not this way. Okay, forward on your hips. All right, and so that's the beginning of the side nom sessions. So what you're gonna do tonight? Get yourself or today, whatever time you look at this, get yourself a journal. I say write it down in the paper as opposed to something in a, in a phone or on a tablet. Get you a pen and a paper. And you're going to write down whatever you think your weakness may be. Whether it's physical, whether it's mental, whether it's a characteristic, personality trait. Uh, a place that you know you need to stop going, a person in a relationship you know you need to stop dealing with, um, a hobby that you've overindulged in, coupon cutting or something, whatever it may be. Um, got too many outfits for the dog, I don't know. But whatever you've been told that might be a weakness and whatever you feel may be a weakness, we're not judging, that's not about judging, that's not what this is about. But any weakness you feel that you may have. And, um, yeah, that's where we're at with it. And that will be what part one is about. And then practice your body roll down joint and roll up. <coughs> Do it as many times as you like. Do it one time. Hang down there real, real good. Get it all out. Roll on up. And be done with it. Or roll down and up, down and up, down and up. Until you feel like you've released and shook it all out. Alright, until next time, this is Ia, the Holistic Artist. And I will see you later.